One of the best things about living in Boise, Idaho is the quick access to mountain recreation and some wonderful mountain lakes. And I often get asked about places like McCall, Idaho or Cascade. So today I am going to take you on a drive from the Boise area. We're actually gonna start in Eagle starting at Highway 55 up to McCall. As we go through some of the little towns between Eagle and McCall, I'll tell you a little bit about the population, a little bit about the prices of housing there, and of course you'll get to see the beautiful scenery along the way. So let's go! So we're starting out on Highway 55. This highway runs north and south through Idaho up to just past McCall. We are gonna travel about 101 miles. We are heading up to McCall to go paddle boarding today. And so we recorded this in October. So this is the very popular community called Dry Creek Ranch. And this is the last subdivision on the edge of the Boise foothills before you begin heading up into the hills. Then there is one more master plan subdivision called Avamore. I do have a video about that. I will link it down below. That is in the foothills. And then it opens up into public and private land. The Avamore subdivision will eventually be very large. It's going to cover some of these hills that are on the south side of Horseshoe Bend in the future. These hills that you're seeing, they're usually green in the spring and through early summer, but since it's fall right now, they're turning yellow and then they will turn brown for the winter. So Horseshoe Bend is our first little town on the way to McCall. It's only about 20 minutes from all the amenities in Eagle, Idaho, and it's about 45 minutes from downtown Boise. So people do commute from Horseshoe Bend into Boise for work. It is quite a small town. The snow over the hill coming into town can be worrisome for some people, and there aren't a lot of housing options here so it hasn't seen the growth that Boise area has. But they do keep the roads clear in the winter and it's so regularly traveled that it's not a big deal to drive from Boise to Horseshoe Bend or up to McCall in the winter. You just have to remember to drive safely when there's snow. Horseshoe Bend has a population of about 1,053 in 2023. It can make a nice place to build a home if you want to be away from the city, but not too far away. As of November 2023, there are 34 building lots for sale, ranging from a standard small lot for $78,000 up to 160 acres for just over $2.2 million. But for about one to 10 acres, lots are anywhere from 150 dollars to $600,000, depending on views and water access. Right now, there are currently 12 houses for sale in Horseshoe Bend, ranging from $115,000 for a trailer up to $1.3 million for a 4,300 square foot house on 25 acres. So the main Payette River runs through Horseshoe Bend, and then we will be following the Payette River for a bit as we drive up to McCall. There's still enough flat land in the valley here for some farming, but pretty soon we will be into some more rugged areas. So I get asked all the time about trees in the Boise area. Lots of people think Idaho and they think forests. And Idaho does have large amounts of forests. We will get into forests on our drive that you will see, but those iconic evergreen forests, they don't begin until we get a bit further north. So hopefully this video shows more a bit of a landscape as we head north from Boise and how long it takes to get to the forests. It's not too long. On the west side of Highway 55 is the main Payette River, and this is where there is great kayaking and rafting tours in the summer. So Idaho actually has the most white water in the lower 48, but much of that white water is pretty advanced. But in the summer, over here in this river, you're gonna see loads of kayakers and rafters on this section of the Payette between here and Banks. The next little town we drive through is called Gardenia. It's an unincorporated town in Boise County, and online it says the population is just over 1,700, but that is definitely wrong. The elevation in Gardenia is just over 2,600 feet, which is about the same as Boise, but they do get a bit more snow here than in Boise. So currently there are no houses for sale in Gardenia, and actually only one house was listed and sold in 2022, and that was an 1,100 square foot home on two acres for $470,000. 
There's also no land listed for sale in Gardenia right now, but most of the Gardenia listings get lumped in with Horseshoe Bend. So between Gardenia and Banks, the canyon gets a little narrower. There aren't really any homes here, just beautiful scenery along the river. So coming into Banks, this is where Highway 17 comes over from Highway 21, and the South Fork of the Payette joins the main. If you head east here on 17, that'll take you to the towns of Garden Valley and Crouch. And those are very nice valleys. They're very livable and they are very popular for weekend cabins. Banks intersection is a very busy intersection in the summer and they will be working on a massive project to put a signal here. Banks is a fun place to come to the river and have a fire and play on the little beach. According to online sources, Banks has a population of seven, but I think there are more people than that. Not Maybe not a lot more, but there are more people than that because there are three houses for sale right now in Banks. They range from 429,000 to 549,000 for cabin type homes on up to six acres. And then there is currently one building lot for sale in Banks that is almost six acres and is $174,000. So you can see as we drive, we're getting a bit more up into the trees and the steeper mountains. We're about 30 minutes from where we left in Eagle now. Um, so people look at a map of Idaho and they wonder why aren't there more livable towns in the mountains like you see in places like Montana. And it's really because the terrain of the mountains of Idaho gets very steep and rugged. We don't have very many large open valleys in the mountains like they do in Montana. And also a huge amount of the forests and mountains of Idaho are public land. And that is great for recreation, but of course then people can't live there. So we're heading into the Boise National Forest here. This is public land and there are several small campgrounds along Highway 55 here for a weekend getaway. And off of Highway 55 are many different dirt roads that take you to all kinds of outdoor recreation areas as well. We like to head out one of these dirt roads in the winter to go cut down our Christmas tree with a permit. So the valley opens up a bit here as we head into Smith's Ferry. This is a great area for outdoor recreation staging, especially for snowmobiling. And then we have the Cougar Mountain Lodge that has a little restaurant and rustic lodging. And they are super nice people here. So one year when we came up to cut down a Christmas tree, the dirt roads were slick with snow and ice. It was totally sheet ice. And our four wheel drive car just slipped right off into a ditch. So my husband hiked out down to the lodge. Luckily we were not too far from the lodge and they came and helped get the car out of the ditch. So anyways, we just chalk it up to another Idaho adventure, but they are super nice there. So Smith's Ferry is about halfway through our trip to McCall. We are about an hour from where we started in Eagle. Online sources say that the population is about 122, which is probably right. It's in Valley County and there are currently about eight houses for sale in the area, mostly cabin type homes, and they range from 210,000 for a very rustic place on a half an acre to 1.25 million for 3,000 square feet on five acres. And currently there are a couple of lots for sale. Um, there's a three and a half acre lot for 365,000 and an eight acre lot on the river for 940,000. As you are probably learning, this area of Idaho is not the place for cheap land. So heading over the historic Rainbow Bridge, this was built in 1933 and we head through the trees again before opening up to the beautiful Round Valley. And as I said, this is fall, so everything is getting brown, but this area is so green in the spring and summer, it's so beautiful. There are a couple of nice reservoirs out this way for fishing, camping, or boating, and our favorite is Herrick Reservoir. So we're about 4,800 feet elevation right now. Um, they get much more snow in this area than we do in Boise, and there is fantastic backpacking and other outdoor recreation in these mountains surrounding not only Round Valley, but really all of this area of Idaho. Okay, and so now we made it to Cascade. Cascade is a popular recreation destination as it is on the south side of Lake Cascade, and that's great for camping, fishing, and wakeboarding. 
This area between Cascade and the next town of Donnelly is probably the most popular area for people from the Boise area wanting to have cabins, but plenty of people live here year round too. So if you want to live in a small mountain town, you could consider the Cascade or Donnelly area. You do have to deal with tourist seasons though. And according to online sources, Cascade has a population of 1,028, but of course that would fluctuate quite a bit due to all of vacation cabins here. So you can certainly build your dream mountain home or cabin in this area. Currently there are about 84 lots for sale, ranging from $35,000 for a third acre lot up on the mountainside to $10.8 million for 1,800 acres. So yes, please, I will take that. <laughs> there are also about 22 homes for sale right now, ranging from $179,000 for a trailer home on a quarter acre lot to $825,000 for a 3,000 square foot home on five and a half acres. Of course, a custom home on the lake would cost much more than that. So Cascade has a grocery store, some local restaurants and shops, and even a little movie theater. And there is a large hotel, the Nobo, for lodging as well. So here we see some smoke from a fire from someone burning yard waste, but that does remind me, I get questions about forest fires here all the time. As far as fires in these areas go, yes, these forests do get fires, because the fires are usually in the rugged terrain areas, they rarely threaten structures, but it is common to have times of smoke in the valleys here in the summer if we have some forest fires. And we tend to think of Cascade as the same town as Donnelly, but they're actually 16 miles apart. So we head up what we call Little Donner Summit to go between Cascade and Donnelly, and that splits Round Valley, where Cascade is, from Long Valley, where Donnelly is. So it opens up here to the far north side of Lake Cascade and over on the west side here, you can see Tamarack Resort. So before we take a little side detour to see a bit of Tamarack, we're driving through Donnelly. Donnelly is growing quite a bit as the resort grows and I would expect it will keep growing as the resort grows. Online resources say that Donnelly has 272 residents, and again, that would fluctuate quite a bit with vacation homes. It's at about 4,800 feet elevation, and they do get quite a bit of snow here that sticks around most of the winter. These areas we've been driving through are quite a bit colder than Boise. Besides getting more snow, their temperatures in the summer and winter can be a good 20 degrees less than in Boise, sometimes more. So it makes for a much more temperate summer climate, but of course, a much more harsh winter climate, or depending on your viewpoint, a better winter climate for more skiing. There are about 52 homes on the market in Donnelly area right now, ranging from 239,000 for a trailer on a half acre to about six and a half million dollars for a 5,000 square foot custom cabin on an acre in the Tamarack Resort area. You can also build in this area on land, and there are currently about 90 lots for sale, ranging from $145,000 for a half acre in the mountains to $9 million for 623 acres. So let's just take a quick side trip to see a bit of Tamarack Resort. It's so beautiful in the fall, so I just wanted to show you a little bit of that. Here's the main village area for lodging. And as I said, these custom homes here are well over a million dollars. They're really trying to sell a whole resort experience here. And these cute little cabins can be yours for just about $1.2 million, but you can also rent them for a vacation stay. So of course we all kick ourselves because in 2010 and 2011, Tamarack was barely getting off the ground and you could buy a condo in the village for under $100,000. We should have all bought condos here then, of course, but Tamarack is beautiful and I'll make a video all about that this winter. So heading to McCall, Donnelly to McCall is about 15 miles. There are beautiful areas around here like Jug Mountain Ranch with so much recreation like mountain biking trails, horse riding, camping, backpacking, hunting. I mean, any kind of Idaho outdoor recreation you can do in this area. 
So even if you don't live in this area, it's only about a two hour drive, one and a half hour to two hour drive from Boise, which of course is one of the reasons we love living in Boise. So heading into McCall, McCall is turning into quite the tourist destination and due to the ski resorts like Tamarack, as well as Brundage and the Payette Lake, there isn't really an off season here anymore. Online says that the permanent population of McCall is just over 4,000, but of course, McCall is also a very popular place for second homes and vacation cabins. It's the little Lake Tahoe of Idaho. If you want to build here, there are about 66 lots for sale right now, and they range from about 174,000 for a third of an acre, all the way up to $151 million for 60,000 acres of absolutely breathtaking wilderness land. So can you even imagine owning all of that wilderness? That I think would be so amazing. And that's gotta be one of the most expensive listings in the country right now. So call me when you're ready to buy that land, okay? And for homes, they range from about $515,000 for a thousand square feet house. and. There are a couple that are under $200,000, but they are old cabins with land leases that are expiring. And then the homes go all the way up to $20 million for a custom 13,000 square foot estate on three acres right now. Even though we've made it to McCall, let's drive north along the lake on Warren Wagon Road, where we will put in our paddle boards in the area we call the meanders. We're gonna put those in for the day. So this is just about two hours from where we started today in Eagle, and it's a perfect day trip from the Boise area. If you have any questions about any of these towns or real estate questions we can help you with, please reach out at our website, summerastonrealestate.com, and we are happy to help. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on our next video.